Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I'm checking the volumes for Mr. B. Um, just to make sure that we're we're good. Uh, wanted to bring uh, show everybody this is the latest uh, trailer for XRP Las Vegas. And by the way, Brad Combs told me that he was now in a position where he was, ha he was gonna have to talk to MGM to see if he could expand a little bit. He's already set a record from last year in in uh, the ticket sales and this thing's going to be massive folks massive get ready xrp community now we are got, now under 30 now he's got a freaking congressman coming days from xrp las vegas 2024 celebrating a new era in finance with the xrp community at the largest xrp conference in the world our amazing speaker lineup with Perry Ann Boring, Christopher Giancarlo, David Schwartz, Simon McLaughlin, Kevin Maloney, Andy Schechtman, Nancy Beaton, John Deaton, Joe Endosa, Ferran Pratt, James Metalawman, Lynette Zhang, Will Petruski, Jeremy Hogan, Robin O'Connell, Jason Cousins, Greg Kidd, and newly added Congressman Wiley Nickel. Thanks to our sponsors for your support of XRP Las Vegas 2024. And by the way, uh, I need, I'm going to get with Brad today about the uh, the winner and your plus one from somebody that brought, bought a ticket in the last 15 days of, of March because we're going to be buying you and your plus one dinner. And I'm going to go through that with Brad. I'm going to try to go through it with him today. Then I had Nick Burefato from Link2 on to talk about not just Link2, but what Link2 is going to be doing at XRP Las Vegas. Okay, I got Nick Burefato from Link2 on to give Okay, I got Nick Burefato from Link2 on to give us an update on Link2 and what they have going on and what they're going to have going on at XRP Las Vegas. Well, good morning, DA. How are you? Good, man. I'm, I've got my second cup of coffee, so we're okay. I've already had two myself. I don't know what that sound is, but I'm, I'm thinking about a third. But I'm gonna try and wait till lunchtime. Okay. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's so great. Well, hey, thanks for having me on. I wanted to, um, uh, I wanted to, to tell your listeners, specifically our members and people who want to become members at Link2, the IPO season is heating up. I mean, the public markets are really doing very well, and, and it's fueling the IPOs. Um, we did have one company that went public in the last couple of weeks, Astera Labs, and they've just done fantastic. Um, we do have three other companies that have already filed their S1s. And when they file their S1s, that's, that's the big step toward going you know, toward the public market. So we've got Circle, um, Rubric, and Toro. Toro is the car rental company that um, you, where you can rent your own car. I don't know if you've ever heard that. I did that. App. I actually Did used you? that, uh, went to wine country with some friends about a year ago, and my friend used it, and the guy literally met us in the parking garage with his car, and then, so I had never seen that used before that. That is, that is really cool. I've never used it. I'm a, I've been aware of it, um, but yeah, they filed for, they filed their S1. We actually put Toro on the platform a couple of weeks ago and had a couple of investors come in and buy out all of it. I mean, they literally just scooped it up. Oh, wow. Um, they, they have filed for, for, you know, they filed their S1. So, so I would tell everyone, we do have Circle and some Toro left on the platform. So if you're interested in companies that, you know, are, are moving in that direction, those are companies. And we also have a special bundle. Um, we started these bundles, which we call Stacks, um, about a month or two ago. And they've been really, really popular. Right now we have a special one that has Circle, Toro, and Anthropic in it. It's a $10,000 bundle. It's equal amounts of all three companies. And Anthropic, for those that don't know, they're, they're a competitor to OpenAI, but they were founded by the VP of research from OpenAI. Um, his name is Dario, um, uh, it's, it's Amandi. 
and they have an amazing product called Claude, which I would recommend everybody do some research on. And I mean, AI is, there's not gonna be one winner in AI. There's gonna be so many winners in AI, but this Claude, this Claude product is amazing. Um, so, so take a look at that, but we do have a bundle if you wanna get in on, on two, two companies that have already, you know, are already taking steps toward public markets. Um, uh, you can definitely do that with the bundle. And, and the link, by the way, was emailed out for that bundle to all of our members last night. So, so you should have got a link last night for that one. All right. And then um, you, you guys have anything interesting on XRP Las Vegas? Man, it is. I, I, I mean, it's, I cannot believe how many people are coming. I cannot believe how many people want to come to our events. Um, we have two events, the daytime event is closed. I mean, it's shut down. I, I cannot fit another person in that event. It's gonna be awesome, but but we were just completely, completely booked. We had to expand the space, and now I've been told we cannot do any more people. Yeah. So I do have a very limited amount of space in the Team Apollo event on the night of May 2nd, and, and I mean it, very, very limited amount. So any TA members, if you haven't signed up to come to our event um, on the on May second um, in Las Vegas, and you'd like to, you need to reach out to us right away because everything is that's going to get shut down as well. Where can um, they reach out to you on that? You know, just reach out to your representative here at Link Two, and and if for any reason you need to, you can also email support at Link Two dot com would be the best way to go, and we'll take care of you. All right, okay. Uh, then we had this. I like this from Ashley Prosper. There are two camps in the XRP community, the Swift haves and the Swift haves not, have nots. I side with the Swift haves. I know where the digital asset investor falls. Um, this is a uh, picture, I think this is from Finestra, um, a, a graphic picture of uh, the Swift um, API. And then it says here, third party integrations, clear, carefully curated third party solutions such as Net Guardians for fraud prevention, MasterCard cross-border services, Thunes and Ripple for cross-border payments connectivity. Gotta love that. All right, James O'Keefe, folks. <laughs> Today is the day that uh, ETHgate is about to transcend the XRP army and crypto and go off into the bigger political world. Look how many followers James O'Keefe has. You're talking 2.3 million. ETHgate is about to go full on viral. Time to send it, folks, okay? We've all worked our butts off to get the word out for over three years now. We were done wrong way back when, and a handful of people decided to try to do something about it and went about uncovering all sorts of sordid details of what went on. And now James O'Keefe, today at four Eastern time for On the Inside, exposing the crypto mafia, part one, Ethereum, exploring allegations, US government agencies attempt to silence whistleblower and monopolize crypto with special guest Stephen Neryoff. Who is this Scott? Oh, this is Stephen Neryoff's uh, attorney, Michael A. Scotto. And then it's got Deaton for Senate. John Deaton's going to be there. Let's see who else is going to be there. Multi-strategy hedge fund manager, investor, advocate, attorney. Who, the, who is this? Chris. I don't know who Chris is. I'll give him a follow. Then David Harris, husband, father, keynote speaker. Not sure what he does. And then, let me see, Eunice D. Wong, crypto trader, da 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 da. So this should be interesting. You got John Deaton on there, so I hope for any of the naysayers uh, benefit that they don't try to challenge the facts that are not in dispute too much because there's nothing to challenge. They've had three plus years to challenge the facts. Stephen Neryoff retweeted this, or tweeted this, Ethereum in Insider teases earth-shattering reveal. Boy, do I hope so. Check this out. Anthony Pompliano getting his complimentary tee up for, to talk more about the Bitcoin narrative. 
I should say from now on when I an introduce Anthony Pompliano, ex question mark military intelligence officer Anthony Pompliano pumping the Bitcoin narrative. <laughs> All right, the locomotive continues, folks. Bitcoin ETFs uh, trading 111 billion last month, triple what they did in January and February. Uh, with us now, Pomp Investment Investor, uh, Anthony uh, Pompliano. You know, Pomp, this is the kind of thing you talked about, right? I mean, the, the demand has been absolutely through the roof. Uh, and here's the interesting thing, though. Because it went, I guess, what was the high recently? 75, 72, something like 72, that? 72,000. 72,000. It's pulled back to 65,000. A narrative they're out there now saying, see, gold is up and Bitcoin is down. It's not a store of value. What do you say to folks who are saying, maybe it's got some investment opportunities, trading opportunities, but it still hasn't proven itself as a store of value? Well, when you want to store value, usually what you're talking about is not storing value from yesterday to today. What you're trying to store value is from today for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, right? And so when I think of Bitcoin, I think about can I actually preserve my economic value for my kids or my grandchildren? And right now, Bitcoin, I think, is probably the best place that you're going to be able to do that. Now, if we go and we look at what people have been historically using as a store of value, there's gold and there's dollars. Gold is up. It's near an all-time high. But we're talking about now it hits an all-time high because it goes up $10, $20, $30, right? These moves aren't meaningful to people who buy gold right here and see a $30, $40, $50 increase in the price. Now, the dollar is down in purchasing power terms, 25% right. since 2020. So you've lost 25% of your purchasing power in four years. Bitcoin during that same time period is up 800%. And so what I think people are starting to realize is, wait a minute, if I store some or a large portion of my wealth in Bitcoin, everything around me gets cheaper over time rather than more expensive, and that's what you want out of a store of value. Larry Fink on our, on our network last week made a lot of news. I mean, are you surprised at how, how much someone like him, he has come around? I mean, a couple of years ago, he was definitely in a no Bitcoin camp. Yeah. Well, I know that there was a lot of people who spent a lot of time with him really educating him. And I think that uh, both Larry Fink and the folks at BlackRock. I don't think they had to educate him on XRP. Enough credit for the work that they put into it. This is not a, hey, I woke up one day. They and had to talk him into something with no utility to uh, do this first. And I think Bitcoin's good now, right. right? They went and they did the work, they did the research, they really spent a lot of time. There's a uh, gentleman over there, Robbie Michnik. Uh, who oh, yeah, formerly of Ripple assets. He spent a bunch of time talking internally with folks, really trying to make sure that everyone knew what is it that we're going to be buying and offering to clients. Now, Larry Fink is one of the kings of finance. If Larry Fink says, hey, I think this has got a shot, people are going to listen. Sure. And so what's interesting is uh, the messenger really matters. There's things that Bitcoiners have been saying for... Okay, well, the mess messenger really matters. All right, well, let's listen to this. Larry Fink. And it may be a Bitcoin or maybe something else that has developed some form of, of a of a digitized currency is going to play a bigger role in the future. And it may be a Bitcoin or maybe something else that has developed. Bitcoin is still a very small market and it, it can move in very large increments with small movements of money. Uh, this asset category is so small relative to other asset categories. It could be another store of wealth, uh, but right now it's still untested it has huge volatility of moving in five and six percent increments with small dollars investments moving it. And so for for anything like that to be um, to be truly successful, it's going to have to have a broadening of the market. Ah, I it, mean, it's going to have to have utility. All right. In DAIXRP.com, we're going to talk about that. We're going to uh, shift away from that Bitcoin narrative and we're going to show you what the adults are talking about and what makes sense. Because what makes sense is does not sync up with, with Anthony Pompliano, ex-military intelligence officer, who, who started a company in social media intelligence before he got into Bitcoin. I always wondered, did Anthony Pompliano, does he still have any communication with the military? He doesn't, he doesn't, he's not still in military intelligence, is he? I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family. We're going to go put the kids to bedtime and talk adult talk in DAIXRP.com. Here we go.